All right. All right, Dr. Moran, Civilized Vitality. Just out in the woods doing my, uh, um, my Sunday walk, and I brought my um, full kit with me, everything except my house. I don't talk about that. I wanted to go over my uh, Hill People gear uh, bag today and kind of my loadout. So I found out something new about this bag. Uh, so this is the uh, Umlindi, okay. my Hill People gear. I'm gonna get some close-ups maybe in a minute. And on the back of the bag, I have the admin panel, which I've got attached with just some quick side release buckles. So I can take that admin panel, set that right off to the side. And then the other thing I carry is my Hill People Gear uh, chest rig. Also attached to my Umlindi is the Prairie. For my, uh, I think it's the prairie belt or the recon belt. So it's just a removable waist belt. And it folds up, stays out of the way. I've got a little drop pouch on the side. I just take that belt off when I get to camp and set that off to the side. Helps me carry uh, the bag if I'm carrying a little bit more of a, like a full uh, loadout. So here's my Umlindi. You can see it's about this size. And this is a 30 liter bag. This is all you need for multiple days out if you uh, know how to pack and follow the, the rules for tools. All right, so the eight families of tools. The most important of which is going to be your uh, clothing, clothing element. So I have up here in the tree, um, my hood. Uh, I'm not sure how cold it is today. It wasn't cold enough for a jacket. So I just grabbed my hood and then as I was walking, I just threw that around my neck uh, like a scarf. And then I opened it up, took my hat off as I got hot from the walk. But now that I'm sitting still, it's getting a little cooler, but we'll just throw that up there. So I always have my hood with me as sort of a, uh, one of my clothing layers. Come on, man, just stay up there. Okay, so get that out of the way. And then, um, of course, I have my hat uh, on. I have layers. I have my, just a flannel. I'm just wearing some jeans because I'm just walking around locally. I'm, I'm not out in the woods. Um, for multiple nights. But first, uh, most important element is gonna be your clothing. So I have a hood with me. And then I really just wanna show you the bag. So this is the microphone case. We'll just set that out of the way for now. So in my bag, uh, as far as clothing elements go, I always have a Turkish towel. I used to carry uh, a shemog. I still do, I'll wear a shemog occasionally. But I have found that the Turkish towel size has uh, many more uses than a shemog. If I need something shemog size, I just fold this up and now I've got that large square that's approximately the size of an average uh, a shemog. Right? And then I can do all the things that I do with the shemog and wear it as a hood. And I can roll this up as an extra scarf if I'm using my, my uncivilized hood as a bag or something. So I have extra clothing layers. It's a pillow, it's a towel, something to sit on. So um, I have my clothing on me, socks, and then I have my uh, a Turkish towel or a shemog, and then another piece of a kit, like a blanket or my hood. And then in a waterproof bag inside here, I always carry just one of those little Sea to Summit dry bags uh, I like to organize. I always have my extra clothing. I have a dry sleeping hat. I have some wool socks. I have a um, wool buff. And then I have a pair of ranger panties in case I want to go swimming or in case I, I don't know, soil myself or something. But either way, I have uh, extra clothing in a waterproof bag in case me and the bag take a dunking. Everything will stay dry. So in addition to clothing, or in addition to uh, the dry clothing for my person, I have my... Uh, shelter. So as far as shelter goes, that's next most important. I have my um, Hyperlite Mountain Gear um, 9x9, um, what do you call this thing? Dyneema tarp. Real super light, uh, crazy light. So I have a tarp and then I just have a pitch kit with all my stakes and stakes and paracord guidelines. I have stakes. I have the uh, the struts to my hammock. I have hammock straps for hanging my hammock. 
So this is my entire shelter system, or my main shelter system, I should say. Right. There's this pitch kit and this, this tarp. And then of course I'm sitting on my orange um, space blanket, which I normally keep fastened to the bottom of the Lindy because the um, space blanket uh, being rolled up under there in bright orange, besides being a ground cloth, it keeps my bag from getting wet when I set it down. So it's pretty wet out today. All right, we'll go over that in a second. Set you off to the side. All right, the only other, uh, or the main other clothing elements or cloth tools I bring is, this is a uh, whoopee or a, like a poncho liner. This is a Swagman roll from Helicon Text, but any kind of lightweight uh, blanket or a poncho liner goes in there. And this would be my, if the weather turned, this would be my sleeping bag or a full outer layer to keep me warm. Uh, but that's in there. And then in the top of my pack, I keep my poncho. All right, so it's just a USGI poncho, which fits well with the poncho liner to give me um, vapor barrier or wind barrier with the poncho liner. So then I have a full a full on cloak or coat. I can use that as a sleeping bag. I could, um, and you often do, use that in my hammock as um, a secondary blanket. Um, usually I also have a, a, a 30 liter, uh, 30 or 35 liter Sea to Summit bag that I have. I keep my hammock, my under quilt, and my top quilt in there. So my whole sleeping system. Uh, I didn't have that today because I'm not spending the night out. So I just brought my, in case I had to spend the night out, I can make um, a shelter with my poncho, my poncho liner, and my ground cloth. Uh, in addition to that, I keep uh, two garbage bags, uh, a heavy duty five mil, a 50 gallon, 55 gallon drum liner, and then just a couple of uh, smaller 20 gallon clear plastic garbage bags. I can use those for a lot of things. Um, so that's that's it in my bag, really. So I mean, that's the main, the main use of your bag is for carrying your, your clothing items to sleep comfortably at night. My chest rig, I keep my first aid kit um, and a few personal items like my phone, my headlamp, uh, some fire starter and such. But mainly my bag is set up to carry uh, my clothing. You see that's the bulk of it is protecting myself and my, uh, regulating my core temperature around me. So that's mainly your clothing. That's going to be your first tool. I have my poncho, poncho liner, Turkish towel, my hood, space blanket, and a tarp. And then I would just add to that a small dry bag that has my under quilt, top quilt, and my hammock. So that's the bulk of what I carry. Now I have a few of the other tools, obviously. I have my containers, I have my cup, and my water. Um, I have my, uh, my bush pot with the lid. Usually I just throw the lid down in the bag. And then in the bush pot, to save space, I stuff my dry, my dry clothes that goes down inside my bag in the Umlindi. This is just um, just a quick uh, ditty bag from Mystery Ranch. I like it because I can see through the top. And this is my salt needle kit. I keep my couple wet wipes in here. I keep my toothbrush, toothpaste, extra contact lenses, a charging cable for my phone, that sort of thing. And then this just my glasses case. Then I just smash this down wherever. That's kind of my personals kit. My uh, toiletry kit stays in my admin bag in the side so that it's always uh, quickly accessible on the trail in case I have to stop. I don't want to be digging through my bag for TP in an emergency. And this outer kit is just, I keep my red cedar in here, some hand sanitizer, chapstick, um, a little kit to sharpen or maintain my, my tools, my knife. And then the side I have quick kneeling pad again easily accessible a life straw and then just a bunch of cordage extra cordage oh I have my spork some tin foil salt and some eating I got my little boo-boo box I can do another video on the boo-boo box uh, fire steel and a glow stick so that's the admin panel is always packed no matter what I'm doing I just throw that on the bag and I've got everything I need for being outdoors All right, but again I want to talk to you about the bag I get distracted I have a saw all right, let's show you the bag. So this Umlindi um, from, oh, we got one more thing in here. Oh yeah, yeah, I have a bag of food. So this would be enough food. Uh, this would be enough food for a, a day or two. And a couple more wipes. 
So let's talk about the Umlindi backpack, backpack from uh, Hill People Gear. So it'll come with just the bag and the yoke, right? And if you've seen uh, any of my other videos, the, I talk about the yoke system from Hill People Gear, how that sort of wraps around your shoulders and gives you plenty of room for your neck. And um, the yokes are interchangeable with all their gear, so you can move this. I could take this yoke system off by running it through these little tri-glides, just pull that through, and then I could put this onto, I could fit that with some grim locks, which I keep on the bag. I could fit that onto the admin pocket and carry this as a smaller uh, day bag, although this is not very big, so I typically, once it's emptied out, I just use this around camp for our day hikes. Okay. So Hill People Gear Umlindi has got these two very large billow pockets on the side. They've got a little cord lock, compression straps, the lower compression straps, there's a set of two, are going to run around that compression, around, around that pocket providing compression for, like say, your um, canteen or Nalgene bottle. And you see how, how roomy that is uh, for that, how big that fits down in there. I could stuff my poncho down inside that pocket next to my canteen, plenty of space. I could get the, the garbage bags down in there. I could tuck my saw down inside that pocket. Right. Plenty of space in those large pockets. There's one on each side. And the pockets uh, don't, uh, they don't protrude into the interior space much. I mean, if I bulge them out like, like this one, pack them out, there's a little bit of bulging into the internal space, but there's no, it's not sewn into the inside, so the pockets are just extra space on the outside. A lot of packs, um, the baffled pockets, when you open them up, they'll actually take their extra space by stealing it from the inside, and then it bulges into the, the contents, and it's just kind of a, a trick. You don't really get that much extra room. Actually, I got some extra rope and a carabiner in here, too. <laughs> so these two large pockets on the outside, I wonder if I could fit... I can't quite get my entire my bush pot in that outside pocket. Although I think if maybe I remove the the cord, oh you know what? I actually can get my bush pot in there. If I were to remove this paracord that's cinching it uh, here, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, if I were to open that paracord up, I bet I could get that bush pot in the side of that pocket pretty easily, all the way down for uh, size. Size reference, this is a Solo Stove uh, 1800. So I could get a Solo Stove 1800 in that side pocket on my Umlindi, which would be, I'm gonna try that, save some space on the inside of my pack, and then I could drop things down in there. All right? So it's got those two large bellow pockets, bellows pockets on the outside, and you can cinch those right down. All right, uh, the only, the other two external pockets are going to be the, the front pocket that has a zip right here uh, near the top and it goes all the way down to the bottom, all the way down to the bottom of the bag. So that's a full depth pocket. It goes all the way down there. Uh, let's see, for size comparison, so this is a Baco uh, Laplander. Right? This is my folding saw. And you can see how much space that has. If I drop that in, that goes all the way to the bottom. And there's plenty of space to get that Baco down in there. Uh, we could get a lot of gear down inside that pocket. I usually just stuff my food down there. And this is uh, something I learned recently. I don't know why I didn't know this, but this pocket is accessible. So I drop my Baco down in there. Maybe I've got my admin panel and some things fastened down on the back of my pack and I can't get at that. Just inside the rim of the zipper, which I thought was just a seam, is actually a Velcro. Okay, so it looks like it's a seam. I didn't think about investigating that. And then you open that up and then you can reach down and access that pocket from inside. So the zipper allows you to access that pocket from inside or if you don't want to open up the top the top flap to get down in there you can just unzip and reach down and access whatever you've got in that slip pocket on the front uh, externally 
So I thought that was a really cool uh, feature. That's something I just learned by watching another um, video about the Umlindi from Hill People Gear, and he showed that, and I, that was just kind of an underlooked or an overlooked feature. I haven't seen that in many other videos, a few reviews that exist on this bag, which in my opinion is the best bag from the best bag company. All right, so we have that slip pocket on the front, the two bellows, uh, water bottle pockets on the outside, and you can use those. I fit my, my ax in there. I put the ax head down in there and use the compression straps to stick it to the side. I've folded up my winter overshoes, my boots, and put those down in there. Uh, I use those billow pockets for so many different things. Now at the top of the, uh, the lid to the, just the gigantic main pocket, there's just one big bucket style backpack, right? 30 liter bucket style backpack. And again, this is the Solo Stove 1800 just drops right down inside there. And I'll try to show that to you so you can see how much space there is in there. Oh, well, that's not going to work very well. Anyway, it's huge. Just eats that right up. Right? You can stuff so much gear down in there. And uh, the compression straps on the outside, depending how much or how little gear you have, they allow you to cinch this bag right down almost flat. So if you're not carrying a lot of gear, you can keep the bag from the bag from flapping around, taking up too much space. So the lid to the main bucket pocket or bucket portion of the pack doesn't have um, an extra, uh, a lot of space in it. It's just sort of a flat po uh, pocket. I like to set things on top. That's where I put my sleeping bag, my um, hammock and quilts in that waterproof bag. But it does have a zipper that runs along the edge and there's kind of a real a tight little slip pocket on the top of this pack so it's not very deep it doesn't give you much space uh, inside you see it's about that thick when I make a fist in there right so there's not a lot of room in there it's a great spot to slip your phone um, put your car keys uh, some snacks it's 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 got space for small things like that the inside uh, top of the lid is covered with that, that uh, I forget what you call it, kind of a loop field, but it's a really um, subtle loop field and you can put your patches there or maybe stick um, some patches, although I don't know why you'd carry patches on the inside of your bag. Just organizer admin panels can stick there. Maybe a small boo-boo kit can Velcro the top so you open the, the lid up and you always know where it's at. On the user side of the bag there is uh, some padding and there is a large slip pocket here with no fasteners or closings no zippers but this goes the full length of the bag and you can use this for um, water bladder I don't I'm not a water bladder person I don't like them you can put more gear in there uh, sometimes I would stuff my I used to stuff my poncho down in there if I'm running my shovel or axe or an extra piece of long gear, uh, like my cold steel shovel, I'll just slide that down in there. It's got this little uh, hyperlon part that detaches. That's where my belt will fasten. But if I'm not using the belt, if I'm just running it like an empty bag, I can just Velcro that up out of the way and it's got that texture. It kind of helps it stick. Yeah, like I said about the yoke system, I think we did another video about that. That's easily removable. You can really configure this bag in several different ways. One of the, the, the best parts about uh, Hill People Gear is the interchangeability and modularity of all their bags. So my Umlindi, I have, for instance, their admin panel, and I just use that as, a, as an additional part of the pack. I strap that on. I'll show you that in a minute, uh, for how we put that on. But I could use, uh, I could put my Tara Humara pack here if I'm running my uh, Decker pack frame with a larger loadout in the winter or we're leading a campaign and I need extra gear, I will use my um, Lindy as a back panel on that larger pack. And then I could put um, my Tara Humara pack on my um, Lindy and then maybe a smaller admin panel on the Tara Humara. It, it's, it's just backpacks all the way down, right? So I uh, really enjoy the modularity. This bag comes with a removable frame sheet. 
All right, so if I want to take the frame sheet out, you've got a plastic frame sheet. You can, you can bend and shape a little bit to fit your back. It's got two uh, aluminum stays. Uh, I should have mentioned this is version two. Version one came with a single stay and a couple of other, um, couple other changes, like the pockets on the side. These large billow pockets on version one didn't uh, billow out as much, so they were kind of kind of tight to get an algae in there. Now they're much, much larger. And this external slip pocket was only accessible from the inside. So there's quite a few changes for this one, version two. Um, comes in a variety of colors. But as they're, um, check their website, remove removable uh, back panel, which is what I usually do if I'm just gonna roll this up and throw it in a suitcase when the wife and I go on uh, vacation or something. Then when we get where we're going, I'll pull it out, throw it on just as a day bag to carry around um, <laughs> all the all the books we buy and other um, souvenirs, all right? Inside the bag, um, I keep some extra buckles. So here I've just got a, a side release buckle and two pieces. I keep that right in the center. And then on these, because there are three hanger tabs along the top. And I keep extra buckles attached there. On the two outer buckles, I've got an extra strap that I can um, I can take the buckles and use that on the outside. I can attach these to the top if I want to carry something extra on the top of the bag. Okay. Let me show you how we do that. So we just take, there's a buckle. Let's say I wanted to strap some extra gear or I had to help carry people's gear many times. And uh, if my bag's already packed to capacity, you can expand that by adding these straps on the outside. You could always use paracord, of course, is which, what I usually do, but let's say I wanted to add an extra strap to the outside. It has these little, these little plastic slips on a lot of the tabs on the outside through which you can just run the strap, slide it through there. And at the end of the strap, there are sewn these little little metal tri-glides that as it comes up just sort of catches there and locks into place in that little plastic tab so the strap won't pull through and from there you can just re-thread your buckle back on and then I've got a pair of I only put one on, but just for demonstration purposes. Then I keep these pair of buckles uh, on the back of these tabs at the top of the harness, uh, the yoke, next to this pull handle, grab handle. I keep them there because this is where I attach my admin panel. Just snaps in to sort of hold that up. Right? And then I would expand these two straps to wrap up and over my sleeping bag like this. And they go up and over and hold that to the top of the the backpack but if I wanted extra an extra layer like I said I have extra straps in there in case I lose a strap I can just click those up on the top in addition to the extra straps I could also attach those to the bottom right now I have some paracord laced on the bottom with a cord lock this is where I keep my orange space blanket rolled up tucked in but if I wanted to I could take these straps on the side that I keep inside the bag and put those down there so I could carry some extra gear on the bottom of my bag not a big fan of carrying my sleeping gear on the bottom of my bag. Uh, I'd rather have it up on the top. I don't know if that's just a personal choice, but for some reason I don't like having my, thinking about my sleeping gear in contact with the, the ground, even though it's in a dry bag and I know it's not getting wet. Just would rather have it up on the top. So I keep those two extra straps, just run down the inside compartment of the Umlindi so that I have them. I can use them for the top or the bottom. So I'll tuck that in there. Then you can see on the bottom, the Lindy has these little plastic straps at the bottom to accept those straps with that little metal flange that keeps them from pulling through. So I can attach those at the bottom. I can attach the, the um, side release buckles, uh, the quick release side release buckles there. The compression straps on the side that run all the way around the back of the bag. 
So they're attached in a couple spots. They're attached by a G hook here, and they're they're run through this little plastic slider at the back, and then back up through that plastic slider that's attached to the G hook. They start in the back, they run around, and I run this little metal G hook down through that tab on the front, which also is equipped with those equipped with those little plastic sliders. Then it runs to the back, levers back up to the front where it's got the plastic buckle, so I can click those two, same thing with the top set, can click those there, and then I can use those to really compress, really compress this bag down on both, because of the way this pulley system works, it compresses it on the side in and flat. So it's a pretty neat system, but they, um, they come right off. If I wanted to remove that strap, let's see if you can see this. So if I want to take those straps off entirely, I can take that little hook out of there. Then removing or adding the straps, because um, you could really, you could really go strap crazy if you wanted to on these Hill People gear bags. I'm not a big fan of uh, extraneous straps. I think I mentioned in another video about the Decker pack frame that um, once I saw all the different modularity and uses, different ways you could configure all the Hill People gear, I got over my kind of my strap aversion. And they've got these really neat uh, little elastic um, strap holders here. They're pretty stretchy. And I've got a bunch of these uh, from the, the different Hill People gear bags I have. I just use those as strap minders so that they stay pretty well organized. Anyway, just a matter of threading the straps through. And down through the cord minder, out through here. It seems a little more complex than it is, but it's not really taking that much time. And then I've removed that strap. Right? So I've got this one long strap, and it's got the, the G-hook and that little slider at the end. And then it runs back through another slider on the bag and then works back up through that slider. And then again, like a little pulley system. So it's got the two points of attachment and then the part that pulls the, the buckle slides that closer. If I wanted to take those all off, I won't do that in this video. I'll just undo that G hook so you can see. You could have a pretty, a pretty clean looking bag without the straps. You can see Right. You can see how I could just clean that up if you want to just run it with no straps at all, no compression. You could tighten that billow pocket in, just run it like that. Okay. Otherwise, the straps are at that attachment point at the back of the bag. In the middle of the strap, you've got that little metal G hook, they're called. And that just slides down through there. Same thing on the other side, and now I've got my compression strap again, so I can use that to. Uh, reduce the capacity of the bag or hold gear on the outside. On the bottom, I've, I've taken the straps off and just, again, that's where I put my space blanket. But you could really compress this bag down or just run it kind of loose and floppy. So you can also uh, pair this up with some of their other gear, like the admin bag. I've added some side buckles, the female uh, buckles on one side and the male uh, part of the buckle on the other side so it matches up with the buckles on my compression straps on my main bag, the Umlindi. So let me put this one back on real quick. All right, so I'm gonna put this on, I take the strap, run the webbing through this little plastic tri-glide on the, the part of the bag closest to my body and sometimes getting these little buggers back in here is quite the quite the chore with cold fingers but I'm not gonna say a bad word on the video because I said I was gonna start cleaning those things up all right in addition to carrying my pocket knife knife on my bag and a saw I always have my multi-tool with me and you will find that these things are almost invaluable 
If your fingers are frozen and you're trying to work web webbing, webbing, my lips are frozen too, webbing through these little plastic sliders, sometimes you can't quite get a grip on them. So you can break out the old multi-tool and work these things through the webbing straps, these little plastic buckles. All right, now that that's through there, so you run that through there. This little G-hook goes around to the front and slips through there. And now I've got the compression strap on the side that will lever back toward the front so when I pull it, it'll reduce the size of the bag from the front to the back. I'm gonna run that strap through this plastic buckle as well. So now it's gone back on itself. Made a tactical blunder by forgetting to put on my elastic cord keeper. So you'd think this would be the sort of thing I would edit out time wise, but I'm not gonna because you know how to operate the fast forward button. Or maybe you're the odd person that enjoys this sort of commentary. Then we're just going to put the head of the buckle, the uh, the buckle back on to the strap. Now normally I wouldn't take these compression straps off out in the field. I don't really need to run my bag slick while we're out in the out in the field. But this is the sort of thing I would maybe configure at home. Sometimes I'll take the straps off, uh, like I said, if we're traveling, and it's just the wife and I going to be walking around. Uh, like, where did we go? A couple. Christmas ago, we went to Salem, Massachusetts. And I just took the Umlindi as an empty, slicked bag with none of those compression straps. And we just used that as our walking around day bag. I didn't need all the compression straps necessarily. Um, I didn't need the, the extra buckles and things. So I took all this stuff off before we left. And it makes it a little easier to get under the, the seat in front of you on the airplane. So I've got that buckle back, and it reaches across the front, snaps in with the two compression straps across the back of the bag, and you can use this to attach a lot of gear. So let me get my, let me back up a little bit, and I'll show you how I load this thing up with all this gear. Get my extra straps in there. I'm gonna get First, I'm going to get my panel down in here. So this is a tight fit to get that um, support panel back in there, that frame sheet, which turns this from a loose bag into a internal frame uh, pack, which will help you carry quite a bit of weight or support quite a bit of weight. I'm just going to push that down in there. Now that curve will sit right down in my I've got those bents so they fit the, the curve of my back, so it fits right down in my lumbar area. So after we got that frame sheet down in there and those extra straps tucked away, I'll open this up a little bit. I'll start loading my bag. I'll stuff my sleeping bag down at the bottom because I won't need that for a while. Yeah, then I can put in To go with my sleeping bag, I'll put my housing kit at the bottom, my my rope and stakes and pitch kit and my tarp. I drop my cooking pot down in there next with my extra clothes. That lid we're gonna tuck down on the side so it doesn't rattle and make noise. I'm gonna tuck this down that billows pocket on the side because I'm not sure why I actually had that. I can take my my saw, my extra garbage bags, my food bag. We'll slide those down that front pocket 
which I can access from the inside of the bag or from the outside here. Just stuff those things down there. My snack bag. What else do we have? Uh, I have my towel and the my Turkish towel and the microphone case. Take my toiletries bag and my electronics and stuff those down in there. And then there's still a lot of room inside that bag. I could stuff a lot more uh, little things down inside there. Now the rest of my camping gear that stays in this admin bag at camp, my, the rest of my, uh, my fire starter, my safety, and then my chest rig with my first aid and uh, immediately accessible things, those set to the side. Now I'll tell you what I've found is the top pocket of my Um Lindy is too small for a lot of gear, but I like to keep my USGI poncho in there. I fold it up nice and flat so it's about the size of that top pocket. Now I always have my rain gear immediately accessible on the top of this bag. I always know where it's at. It folds in there and sits in there nice and flat. Okay. Doesn't uh, impede the functioning of this lid at all. Matter of fact, kind of stiffens it up almost like a panel and lets it sit out of the way. You can see how thin that is. It's a great place, great place to keep my rain gear, my poncho. So I always know where that's at. So I have that, and then I'll go over here to the side. I'll work this side compression strap loose. And down into here, I'll slide my clean canteen, 40 ouncer, and nesting cup. Okay. So far, so good. Now, um, so the bag's all packed. That's all of my camping gear in there. And I have a few odds and ends in my uh, admin panel. Plenty of room left in here as well. And then I can take the admin panel, the two straps I keep on the top, and I'll buckle those at the top of my Umlindi. And then I could just let it hang there and run the compression straps around, right, over the entire bag, right, like this to hold it flat. That would be fine, but it kind of gets in the way if I want to get in the pocket. So what I've done, like I showed earlier, is I've added these extra buckles that stay on my admin panel and allow me to cinch this thing right down. And if I needed to, a lot of times, I've been able to loosen this up so the space between here, between the two bags, I take those extra straps from inside, attach them to the admin panel, and the bottom of the Umlindi through this space here. I'll attach those two straps to work almost as a, a, the bottom like on a pack frame, and then I can expand this out and stuff things down in there, like some extra clothing, or uh, like I said, extra people's gear, or maybe some things I forgot before I loaded the bag up. But, so this weighs, I don't know, maybe, 15 pounds with all that gear and I don't have all of my water or food but in order to make it a little lighter to carry and honestly just so I could show off more of how the gear goes together I open that up that backpack belt lies right there the velcro tab goes over the top and this attaches almost the same way to my Decker pack frame so I have one belt uh, and I can use that with all of my, except the Tara Humara, but I can use that with my Umlindi and with my Decker pack frame. Um, I don't know if it's compatible with their Junction bag or the, the Connor or what's the other one, the, the Aston, the Quia. I'm sure that those are, uh, the belts are compatible with those as well. Uh, they come in a variety of colors. I have all of my Hill People gear in, uh, this is called uh, Foliage and Manatee or the gray. They come in black, um, blues, all sorts of, uh, a coyote, which is sort of a tan. My wife has her Decker pack frame and bag and a coyote, ranger green. So you get a lot of different um, cool color options from Hill People gear as well. All right, I'll show you one more thing. I have my belt on. And then I would throw my chest rig on. 
You can also just, if you don't want to wear the chest rig, you can use, I'm sure we've shown this in some of the other videos. You could take uh, these two, there's a couple of grim locks here, and I could remove the harness from my chest rig and throw it in the bag. Again, more modularity and just use these grim locks to hang that from the webbing on the front of my uh, yoke strap on my hill people gear so just kind of a one unit and then if you're walking around camp you could take the the harness out and put that on later if you want it so one more thing let's throw this off to the side for a second and i got this little orange space blanket that's always part of my kit i was just kneeling on it today so because it's kind of cold and muddy out Oh, for the love of God. Okay. And because it's wet and muddy out, I was kneeling on this. Like I said, I usually keep this thing folded up. Folded up kind of flat. And then I put that right on the bottom of my own Lindy in these little paracord. You could use shot cord too. I have uh, some shot cord here on the bottom of the uh, admin panel. That sometimes we're, I think I've got that there because we were up a few weeks ago and I was running my poncho there because it was rainy and I had it out. When was the last time we went? Women's camp? I don't remember why I had that shot cord on there. But either way, I put that orange pad on the bottom of my pack so when we stop like on a day like today and I set my pack down against the tree it's not absorbing water in the bottom of the pack or any of the contents it just sits on that waterproof uh, orange okay. put the bag on cinch up the buckle Tighten these up a little bit. And then my bag's on. Plenty of space. My chest rig's here. If I had uh, a lot of weight in the chest rig, let me see if I can show you this actually. So you take that Grimlock. Let's see if I can do this with the microphone. I've got my sternum strap. So my bag's on, holding some weight, but maybe I want to take a little weight off the harness. Once my bag is on, I can reach up and fasten, fasten this Grimlock to the strap, right through that little piece of strap that runs. And now the weight of the chest rig is on the yoke system of the backpack and not on the harness that sits under the system on my shoulders. Now, sometimes that helps. If I'm not running the harness, I would be swinging this from my bag completely with these, these little grim locks. And then you just have to remember, um, you know, when you get somewhere to go to take your bag off, if you're doing it that way, you just have to remember to not only undo your sternum strap from the backpack, but to maybe uh, unclick one of those because this bag's going to be swinging from your uh, yoke system. So that's my Hill People gear, uh, Umlindi. Let's see if I can just fix this. That's my Hill People gear, Umlindi uh, backpack. I really, really like this backpack. It's only about 30 liters. Might seem kind of small, but if you pack right and you've got a lot of redundancies, that should be all you need. So, um, get my hood. And then the sun is out, but don't let that fool you. It's a little brisk out here. So. I'm going to finish my walk and uh, what, uh, what's Rendell always say? Give you something to comment about. So, sorry, I got distracted. I like that dog in the cartoon, squirrel. So um, leave some comments about the Lindy bag, some other, uh, some other ways you would configure this or carry some gear. If you carry 
or use Hill People gear, leave us a thumbs up and a like and a comment. Uh, they really are the official, I think, the official gear of, at least from my end, of Uncivilized Vitality. Can't recommend them enough because of the modularity and all of the ways you can use uh, the equipment together and how its functionality is uh, it's just right. There's not too much. There's not extraneous pockets everywhere. The more pockets, the more junk you carry. So uh, leave some comments below, like, share, subscribe, and all that. And uh, that's it. That was a long one. <laughs>